Okay, everyone. So go ahead and sign on. And in the meantime, we'll kind of go over a little of the uh, legalities. Uh, always read disclaimer, right? What do we always say? Read the disclaimer. Read the fine print. Don't just click I accept, right? Uh, nothing in this show is an offer to buy or sell any securities. We're not registered investment advisors. Anything we say should be taken for entertainment purposes only. Always consult the professional advisor before you make any uh, decisions with your money or anything else. Uh, you don't call an electrician for plumbing, right? So uh, also past performance is no indicator of future performance. Uh, and again, just read the disclaimer. Take a couple minutes, read the disclaimer. We'll give everybody a chance to sign on here. Uh, we get the microphone set up here. All right. I love this microphone. The only thing about it is I kind of feel like Stormy Daniels. <laughs> that was your blue joke for the day. So on that beat, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome. Let's take a look at here. So welcome, everybody. Um, you know, hey, we closed yesterday's show, right? We closed yesterday's show on Netflix, right? And we were talking about today, we were going to kind of talk about, because we always want the show to be a little bit of a lesson, you know, kind of sharing our experience and, and you know, maybe help a new trader, maybe help an experienced trader that never came across certain situations, whatever. If it, if it helps somebody, it works. But so we were talking about Netflix and remember yesterday, so right when we signed on to the show, they had posted earnings and uh, they missed. Subscriber growth was uh, a little low. I didn't meet expectations. So the stock tanked. Remember after hours last night while we were talking on the show, uh, after hours, the stock was down about 55, 50, 55 dollars. It was looking really bad. Um, we were even talking about CNBC and stuff, right? Uh, big articles last night, huge articles. Netflix misses, tech stocks about to tank. Uh, NASDAQ about to tank, uh, tech stocks. Na Netflix going to take down market. Hey, everything. Uh, they were throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the rally. And what happened? Well, this morning, guess what? Netflix opened down $55. It was ugly at the open, right? It was really ugly at the open. Guess where it closed? Closed down about 20 bucks. It was actually about 15 bucks within that green area. That's a pretty incredible swing, right? Even for a $500 stock, you're talking going down 50 bucks, 55 bucks, and bouncing all the way up to just being down 15 bucks. So let's talk about this a little bit, that Netflix miss. And this was the lesson. You learned the lesson. What did we do once we were done with the show? Nothing. Nothing. In that situation, just sit back. Don't fall into the knee-jerk reaction. If you did, if you were a knee-jerk reactor, if you were a reactor and you weren't an intelligent trader, this is the difference between a trader who has a plan and is sure of themselves and somebody who's just throwing darts at a dartboard, right? If, if you had knee jerk last night and during uh, uh, after hours trading, you'd sold your stock for a $55 loss. Ouch, that hurts. But even on a $500 stock, $400 stock, that's painful. Um, if you got up this morning or if you put your sell order in overnight and you said, oh, I got to get out of Netflix, it's down 55 bucks, man, it's going to go down 100 bucks. What am I going to do? Um, and you sold, you really got screwed. Why? Well, you didn't have a plan and you didn't follow the big man's advice. And you probably are thinking, I'm the big man. No, 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 no. Not that. A little bit bigger of a man than that. Uh, let's talk about Warren Buffett and we'll talk about him in a second. So as the day progressed, Netflix started to recover. So as long as you were patient, you were sure of yourself, you're OK. And then the stock started to recover. If you wanted to get out of the stock because you're not confident going forward, you could have got down in a little $15 loss. Uh, there were some people we were watching on some of the options boards that bought those five dollar calls, five dollar calls uh, at uh, I think it was three hundred three eight no four eighty or something like that, and they made about ten dollars a contract. I mean that was a huge trade, but it took balls of steel to play that play. Um, for you subscribers, we didn't play that because that that's really a risky play. But for all the guys that did, hey, you think those were the knee-jerk guys? No, those were the guys that knew what they were doing. Those were the guys that had a plan. They had an entry pl plan. They had an exit plan. They had a contingency plan, right? And they made bucks. So 
this all plays. I mean, this all plays to what we were talking about um, last week. Let's look at it, right? Stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Well, the patient were well rewarded today. The impatient are probably trying to refund their portfolios. So that's your big lesson. And you know, you probably thought this is going to be a three or four day lesson, but all we do, we had a good feeling of what was going to happen with Netflix and we didn't buy it into that. We're also very experienced, very patient traders. A lot of people say we have uh, nerves of steel at stockpickprofits.com. And it might be true. You never know. Um, but all it was just being patient, being sure of yourself, and you could have saved yourself at least $35 on the trade per share, per share. That's that's a lot of money. All right, so let's kind of move on here. Um, that was kind of our lesson of the week. That was an easy one. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the market. We'll go solo here. Okay, so the Dow Jones ended up but about 55 points. The S&P ended up about 11 points and the NASDAQ closed at an all time high. So you saw that, right? You went from last night where everything was bleak and the end of the world, CNBC, right? We had the Trump presser. Everybody was so sure that we, were, we had a treasonous president and everything was the wheels were coming off. Then after the market, you had the Netflix miss and oh my God, then the tears really started flowing. And then all of a sudden you were just in this ugly, ugly overnight situation, right? Where a lot of people probably didn't sleep last night. We slept like babies. So we went from... The Netflix miss to Netflix almost pulling even and the NASDAQ being at an all time high. Again, here we go about the media, right? What if you had bit into all that? Did you see any articles on CNBC that said, hey, all you investors in Netflix, here's why you might not want to sell? No, no, no. It was all about selling. It was all about panicking, right? Nobody clicks the good stuff, right? So, hey, along that same vein, the banks continue to roll, right? Goldman Sachs had their earnings this morning. Boom, power earnings. We got Morgan Stanley. Um, I believe it's tomorrow before the bell. Uh, we'll see how they play out. We're just kind of rolling into the regional banks now with the earnings. And this should be a lot of fun. We've got a couple regional banks that we really like. We've got a BDOC that we're playing that we really like, AINV. If you guys are looking for some ideas out there, AINV is a nice little BDOC, trades about just under five six dollars and it's a nice little company go take a look at it it's got earnings in a couple of weeks maybe there's a play for you there um we are also we we like huntington bank we've owned that back from the winter of 2016 when we got it at 11 12 dollars a share uh, of course it's trading 14 15 dollars a share right now and looking great uh we're hoping that they actually of the regional banks and this is a little tip for you viewers out there if you're looking for a regional bank to play of the regional banks, they had the best earnings, re uh, best reaction to the stress test. So hopefully that translates into a powerhouse earnings report and even better, some big forward guidance, right? Raising of the dividend, buybacks of stocks, things like that. So there's a lot going for banks uh, night and day last week to this week, right? So, hey, were you in bank plays last week and panicked out of them? You know, because remember, we for about two weeks, we've been in a bank play. We never panicked. Again, smart traders, entry plan, exit plan, contingency plan, right? So, and then, you know, there's some Trump news. We just mentioned it a little bit earlier, right? Uh, Donald Trump this morning came out and he kind of said, you know, he does, he does agree with the intelligence community that there was some kind of Russian involvement in that, uh, in uh, trying to meddle with the election and stuff like that. And he kind of backtracked a little bit, but you know, what he said made a little bit of sense. And I don't know, are we overreacting to that? You know, it, it's, that is a political discussion and that's something we just don't get into. We're traders, right? Um, really, we only want to know how it's going to affect the market. <laughs> and obviously with the highs we had today, it didn't. Now that S&P 500 is right off its all time high. Uh, we've got some big, big component stocks coming up for the Dow. We've got IBM, I believe, tomorrow, um, and we'll start having some even bigger ones, right? There's Caterpillar coming down the line. And then, of course, we'll roll towards the big fang stock, Apple. That should be a lot of fun, and Facebook. So I mean, we'll keep you updated on those. Uh, you know, if, if you've got some ideas that you're trading, go ahead and post them in the comments, and we can all talk about them on the show. 
but really for today, that's that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, we we went to sleep last night. We closed out the show with all of you, and uh, everything was bleak. It was the end of the world. Netflix was going to kill the, the NASDAQ. Uh, tech stocks were going to sell off in a massive found fashion, probably dragging down the whole market. And uh, guess what? None of it materialized. So again, always do your research, always disseminate well, and always have a strong plan. But before that even starts, and this is something we always teach to our members, is that everything starts with you before you even open a brokerage account. Do you have the right mentality for your trading? Do you have the right risk assessment on your portfolio? Are you playing the proper amounts on every play? Do you have a solid plan? Do you have a system that makes you money consistently year after year after year? Again, don't fall into that 100% gains, 200% gains, 5,000 to a million in six months. Don't fall into that. Wealth building is about constantly accelerating your money's worth. Right. That's all it is. You know, we had a good comment in our group today about uh, compounding. And we've said it many times on the show. Take that five thousand dollars. Right. Take that five thousand dollar amount. Go on the Internet and Google compounding calculator. Put in five thousand dollars and annualize it at 30, 30 percent, about 30 percent for five years and see what number you come out with. Tell me that wouldn't excite you. Tell me that wouldn't make you happy. OK, and that's what you should go for as a trader. That's that's all it is. Don't chase the ambulances. Chase the money. Right. In fact, if you're a good trader, make the money chase you. So let's kind of one more time with Warren Buffett, because, you, you know, that's one of our favorites too. all. All of our viewers know this is probably one, our favorite of them all. And I, we know it's Samuel and the office people's favorite. A stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Absolutely. We learned, you know, that lesson was a hard lesson for a lot of people this morning. So, you know, let's kind of close out the show with uh, talking about the market going forward. So we've still, we're only three days into earnings season and we're getting great earnings. A Netflix miss, come on. Uh, that doesn't tell you that the, all the other fangs are going to miss. And there's so there are thousands of other stocks in the market. Netflix gets a lot of play because it's a big stock. It's a big name stock. Almost. I mean, everybody knows Netflix, right? It's like Apple. It's like fa Facebook. It's like those. But there are a lot of great stocks that help carry the market, that help fuel these rallies. Now, yes, over the last few months or I think year to date, Fang stocks are responsible for about 80% of this market rally, but that doesn't mean it's all Netflix, right? And we learned that, right? If you listen to the people on CNBC, if you follow the articles that you were seeing after that Netflix miss, it all, it, you would have thought Netflix was the only stock in the stock market. You would have thought that Netflix was the dictator of all future moves, right? And it's just not true. So going forward, let's remember, we still got some of the big, biggest fang stocks coming up. Facebook, Apple, Google. We haven't heard from Google yet. We've got the big names in banks down. We're going to get Morgan Stanley tomorrow, and then we'll start getting the regionals through there. Um, so that's kind of the first wave is always your financials. And then we start getting into the fun stuff, right? The real playable stuff. Then we'll get into your speculative stocks. Snap. We got a play going on Snap that we continued. You guys that follow along on the show know um, that with Snap, we started out with a trade a uh, few weeks back with some $13 calls. Uh, we've actually rolled into $16 calls and we also converted some of the $13 calls. So we got some shares at $13. So we're looking like we're going to make a big double dip. Snap had a great day day. Now, that was the other thing today. The Google had a big outage, their web services. So uh, Shopify, Snap, Drudge, uh, a bunch of websites were down for a little while. Uh, maybe that contributed to some of Amazon's problems yesterday with the Prime Day. Um, on top of all the volume traffic that they get on Prime Day, maybe there were some problems with the Google back end. But anyways, if you were trying to get on Shop or Snapify today and stuff and you were having trouble, uh, I believe Netflix got caught in that too, um, of all the other problems they've got there, right? But it, it, it was just a Google back end. The first thing we saw, we have this... Uh, this website we like to look at that kind of condenses Twitter and makes it, you know, you don't have to go through, you don't have to go on Twitter 
to know what the vibe of Twitter. Because as much as we don't like Twitter, there's a pulse to it. And so we kind of follow it. And it, it was really entertaining the way Twitter lit up uh, over that. Uh, it was a big, like people were coming out and saying it was a big left-wing conspiracy to take drudge off the, we- off the internet. Um, there was another right-leaning website that went down for a while. And it, the Civil War yells started coming out, you know, oh, the left's taking down websites and blah, blah, blah. Don't get caught up into that paranoia, okay, you guys? Remember, we're traders. We trade the market, you know? Uh, the news is fun. The news is entertaining. But it doesn't, doesn't, it's not, a, it's really, except for real news, which is not as easy to find as you think it is, uh, it's really not even an indicator of trading, right? Unless it's economic news, and we don't get that from CNBC anyways, right? We get that from the uh, better websites. Look, here's another tip for you guys, okay? Since then, maybe I was kind of anticlimactic on that lesson on Netflix. You probably thought we were going to go into some big, intricate way to manage that trade. And all it was, the answer was just be patient, right? Be patient. Like Warren Buffett says, don't be the ones transferring the the patient people's account be the one getting the money and that's all it was the lesson to that was just be patient right so you probably thought there was some big uh 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 lesson in that and there really wasn't so you know let's uh the market going forward we think there's still more push to this market we think there's new highs to this market you know um when uh when Excuse me, I was thinking about that. I was going to say two things at the same time. Look, going forward, there's still a lot of earnings out there, and there's a lot of good companies that are about to report. And so we want to make sure that we stay in this bullish posture. Of course, we want to be cautious because at any moment, something like a Netflix could happen with a stock that really will take down the market. Um, it's like tomorrow, you got to be careful with IBM reporting. If IBM misses, which I think they've missed for 19 straight quarters, uh, and they start selling down, it can pull whole Dow down, right? Uh, IBM's that strong. It's like Caterpillar and e- even Apple to a certain extent like that. But you want to be careful, right? Don't buy into that. Always remain patient. Always have that good plan and all that. So look, guys, uh, doesn't look like we got a whole lot of comments today. So we're just going to kind of say welcome to everybody. Uh, you guys all know who you are. And we're going to kind of roll the close, roll the show to a close now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Remember now, uh, we're playing banks. If, you, if you're if you kind of watching what we're doing, we're playing banks. We're still in the banks play. Um, we like that little BDOC. We're playing AINV. We like that stock. Um, we like banks to continue this run. We think that what banks needed was those first earnings reports from the bigs to get them kicked back into gear. Remember, they, they like even Bank of America three weeks ago, it was right around that $31, $32, right? And then it just was a slow trickle down for two weeks. It needed catalysts to reignite it. Well, it got the catalyst, right? Its own Bank of America's earnings report was one of them. And then you also got some good earnings reports from some other big banks. And and this kind of just ignited the trade again. Well, we think that that's only half the half the story on this. We think the regional banks will start reporting and we think that their reports will be even more stellar than the big banks were because they've got more room to grow. And so their results should be just astronomically well. So we think that'll be the second catalyst to push these these reports from the first couple of days of banks have kind of pushed banks into striking distance. Now we think the regional banks reports will push it into the money. So we're long still on banks. We're short Pandora. We still don't like streaming Pandora's the last couple of sessions had a good, good sessions. Um, but again, we're going to remain patient. <laughs> so look gang we'll be back tomorrow with more um we hope you enjoyed the show again you know sorry about that netflix lesson but we really wanted to get the point across right i mean come on guys uh warren buffett said it and he means it right stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient and guess what if you ask them every person that sold netflix during after hours or at the open this morning will agree with warren buffett Okay, so don't be those impatient guys. Okay, Uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. If anything comes up, you know, it's kind of a 
it was a long day today, right? It was a lot of emotion. Ever since the Netflix uh, report came out last night, uh, the emotions of the market are very draining. So, you know, people are tired. You could see it too in the last 15, 20 minutes volume kind of tapered off. Market kind of pushed well into the close, which is what we wanted to see. But you could tell the market was a little tired. Traders are a little tired. So uh, let's all get some good rest tomorrow and get back at it tomorrow. We'll see you guys about 15, 20 minutes after.